Creep Course teaches us that history can be murder. Written and directed by Jeffrey Boehm, shot by Rick Boda, and based on a story from The Haunt of Fear number 23, drawn by Graham Ingalls. Whether you're book smart or not, be careful in this class. Professor Finley teaches Egyptology as Reggie has his mind on football and Stella vigorously takes notes. Finley is very passionate about ancient Egypt. Before dismissing his students, he reminds everyone of the upcoming midterm. Reggie clearly isn't ready, much to Finley's annoyance. Stella is way more prepared. Finley embarrasses Reggie, announcing that if he fails, his GPA will drop, barring him from the football team. The comics Stella isn't as academically focused, as she gets dolled up for her date. Mitzi, her roommate, warns her that three female students have disappeared. A serial killer is rumored to be on campus. Stella scoffs at those ridiculous stories. Mitzi wants to know who the special guy is. It's Professor Finley, the ancient civilizations teacher. Mitzi is grossed out by the old creep, but Stella needs a passing grade. Her subtle flirtations with Finley finally landed her some private tutoring at his home tonight. He was insistent she not tell a single soul. Reggie visits Stella at her job. She's clearly smitten with the attention he's giving her. He needs her help to pass Finley's midterm. Luckily, Stella has taken plenty of notes the two of them can look over together. In the library, Reggie tells a sob story about how he isn't cut out for studying. But there is another way Stella can help. Now, Finley keeps a collection of old Egyptian stuff at his house. You could make an appointment to go over there, have a look at this junk, for extra credit or something. He'd go for it in a second. You can do it tomorrow night. Why would I want to do that? Because when you have him distracted, mm. I'm going to go in there and make a copy of the midterm. Stella doesn't feel comfortable with cheating. Reggie pushes his woeful story further. Shy Stella sees through it, but ultimately falls for him. Wearing her best dress, Stella arrives at Finley's house. He is surprised by how dressed up she is. Stella knows getting a passing grade is going to be too easy. She pretends to be astounded by his assortment of old statues. Finley invites her into the library, which is in the basement. She believes all she has to do is kiss him, and ancient civilizations will no longer be a worry. As Finley talks about his love for the Roman Empire, Stella finds a big wooden door at the bottom of the stairs. He encourages her to open it. When she does, he pushes her in. Stella is trapped in the dark with the three missing students. This is Professor Finley's private coliseum, with a lion, tiger, and gorilla in cages. The girls are his martyrs. The show's Finley doesn't need any flattery. His home is open to all his students for additional studying. His basement can rival a museum. Stella finds the hidden door to a real Egyptian burial chamber. Look inside. Well, I, no, I don't think so. Oh, nonsense. It's the best part. While we know Stella should be hightailing it out of there, upstairs, Reggie sneaks into the house. Questioning why there are torches already lit, Stella realizes something is wrong and tries to run. Reggie to the rescue. What's the matter with you? Can't you do anything right? This isn't good. Reggie and Finley are in cahoots. The football star is ready to leave, but not before the trumpet sounds. A scared, stiff Stella now has an ancient mummy after her. With the mummy's hand around her neck, Stella speaks to the decayed king, posing as an Egyptian princess. The professor shares his family's history of grave robbing over a drink with Reggie. That mummy downstairs has been with the Finleys for generations, occasionally requiring a virgin sacrifice. 
A trumpet fanfare plays. The lights turn on. Finley announces himself as Emperor Nero. The animal cages open. The lion, tiger, and gorilla circle their prey. Finley snacks on grapes as he watches the girls be torn apart limb by limb. A messy end for Stella and the girls. Reggie got Finley his sacrifice. In return, he wants a copy of the midterm. A passing grade isn't enough. Between stolen relics and maiden sacrifices, Reggie's got dirt on Finley. The professor isn't worried, as he gives our football star a private lecture on Egyptian organ removal. They would mix a potion, call it a drink, which they would pour down the corpse's throat. After a short time, the organs would dissolve into a thick sludge which would ooze from the body through the mouth and the ass. Finley was one step ahead of Reggie the entire time. Reggie thinks Finley's bluffing until his insides start evacuating out of every orifice in his body. This scheme is getting messy. Mitzi shakes the screaming Stella awake. The basement coliseum was all a nightmare. Realizing what time it is, Stella is off to her date with Finley. She arrives at his home. It's much more quaint than her dream. Finley is surprised by how dressed up she is. Stella knows getting a passing grade is going to be too easy. She is relieved there are no signs of Roman culture, but Finley was never fond of the Roman Empire. He leads his student down the hall, opening a door to three sarcophagi. Donning the garb of an Egyptian priest, he expresses his admiration for the mummification process. He's gonna need a fourth sarcophagus for Stella. Finley fits Reggie's body into a sarcophagus. Taking a breather, the secret door to the mummy's room opens behind him. Finley investigates. The ancient king just stands there. The professor demands to know what's happening when Stella comes out with a royal makeover. I write down every word you say, so I figured it out. The legend of Ramseth and Nephra. The mummy who wouldn't die, all that shit, I remembered it all. So I played along with this sack of rags and boy. <laughs> was he happy to see me? Good thing she paid attention in class. You know, there was something else you said in class. About how jealous Ramseth was. Let's see if you were right. Now, don't, don't, oh, Stella. Oh, Professor Finley, one little kissy whizzy for your Stella. favorite No, sister. no, Stella. Your favorite sister. No. No, 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 no. He's learning a lesson he'll never forget for the rest of his life, which is not long. Later, the police question Stella about her class project. At least she got an A+. Creep Course the episode changes up the lesson plan set by the comic. The original presents a psychotic teacher holding female students captive for his Roman games. Only for us to find out it's all a dream, but wait, Stella's doomed anyway? It's a hokey twist. I think the animalistic end for the girls, followed by a new student being lured into Finley's trap, would have been a darker, more satisfying conclusion. The smarter Stella is a welcome change in the adaptation. Her meekness sets her up as the damsel in distress, but she outsmarted a conniving teacher and a mummy older than all of us. Reggie, this iteration's struggling student, resorts to more nefarious means to secure his passing grade at a great cost. Even when playing a jerk, it's hard not to care for Anthony Michael Hall. There's a moment where we think Reggie's plan has gone horribly wrong, and he may have a heart of gold under his exterior. But no, Jeffrey Jones as Professor Finley is creepy. I'll leave it at that. None of the three leads make it out unscathed, and I love that. Despite her victory, Stella's mind is gone. We got a classic monster, a game-changing twist, and a happy ending with mental scars. Creep Course definitely passes the class. 